Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have a killer lineup of institutions for you to hear from this afternoon, and we're going to get started here shortly. So a reminder, first of all, um, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this afternoon. Sign up for more sessions. This is a great way to, to explore different colleges. Um, there is a whole nother hour happening of sessions right after this um, session of presentations. This session is being recorded and will be available within about a week, along with all the other sessions happening this evening at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. Finally, we know that you're going to have questions, so feel free at any time to put your question in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. You'll want to list out your question and then also note the institution that you're directing your question to. That way our panelists um, are able to answer you appropriately. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. First up, I'd like to introduce to you Newman University. All right, hello everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the admissions counselors uh, from Newman University. So just uh, to start off, Newman um, is ranked eight for social mobility. So what that means is we really do a great job at you know helping some of the students that may, may be economically disadvantaged. I'm um, really you know success making you sure that you get to graduation. We also are ranked best among the regional universities in the north as well. So a couple other things that we have um, been known for is we are the College of Distinction for 2020-2021, uh, College of Distinction for our Catholic, um, being Catholic College, a college in Pennsylvania for our business programs, education, nursing, and career development. So just a couple um, other accolades that we have. So a couple of numbers to note for us is going to be, uh, we, are we are a small private Catholic school, so 2,400 undergrads, 48 academic programs, 22 is average class size, 14 to one student to faculty ratio, 24 division three sports, four residence halls, 99% of our students receive some form of financial aid and 100% of our majors are required to complete a internship. The biggest thing is that uh, student to faculty ratio and the class size you really get that unique and personal experience here at Newman. So just some of our majors, uh, we have a lot, as you can see, but a couple of that are, you know, more popular is going to be our uh, biology, communications, criminal justice, education, pre physical therapy, nursing is a big one as well. Uh, any, anything under our business school as well. Um, these are just all, all of our majors. Uh, we have pre-professional programs, graduate programs, everything. So we have what's called the hub here at Newman, and we just got a grant to completely redo all of our academic resources for our students. That includes tutoring, writing services, disability services, academic coaching, and career and personal development. Like I said, these are all free to all of our students, uh, and they are located in our central uh, building as well. So it's really easy to find. Definitely recommend using and taking advantage of all of these resources. So athletic, like, like I mentioned, we are Division Three for sports, which means that we cannot offer you a athletic scholarship. But what you will see is you will see playing time. You, and you really are able to balance your academics with your your academics with your athletics, even if you are, uh, you know, holding a pretty rigorous course load like nursing or education. We have it at the varsity level, the club level, intramurals, or you can just be a spectator. So applying to Newman is super easy. We are on the Common App as well as our own application. For the juniors, uh, our application is going to open August first. As long as you have a two point five GPA, we don't need to see those test scores. Uh, because we are test optional for most of our majors. Only if you are interested in pre-engineering or pre-pharmacy will we need to see those test scores. And nursing as well has a test optional component. As long as you have a 970 on your SAT, you can submit them um, you know, again to that program. Or if you don't want to submit them, you have to have a 3.0 overall and your 3.0 in your um, math and science courses. So these are all of our merit scholarships. This is based on your GPA and your GPA and your test scores. Uh, like I said, you don't have to submit them, but we have a no harm policy here at Newman, which means that, you know, I'm gonna give you the scholarship that's going to be higher either with or without those scores. So we go anywhere from 10,000 to $19,000 and we have a couple additional grants as well that we can offer. 
So you, the, these are those other grants and scholarships. If you come from a Catholic high school, you will be rewarded three thousand additional dollars. Nursing award for any nursing students out there. A residential grant if you're going to live on campus to kind of offset the cost of living on campus. A legacy award. So if you're mom, dad, brother, um, grandparents graduated from Newman, you would get that. And as if you are a first generation student, which means you are the first member of your family to achieve or go for a bachelor's degree, you would get this. All these are stackable on top of your merit scholarship and they are all renewable for all four years a year at Newman. And that is everything about Newman um, and I can answer any questions you guys may have, but I will throw it back over. Thank you so much. I was on mute. Um, thanks so much, Andrew, to you and Newman. Um, next up, you have the opportunity to hear from New York Institute of Technology. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Harsh Smith. I'm the Assistant Director at New York Tech. Just like it says in r &E, we are in New York City itself. So we have two campuses. We have one that's right in Midtown Manhattan, as well as one that's in Long Island. It's definitely up to you on what campus you like to apply to. We just take one application. So you definitely just have to specify which campus. If you're looking to be in the heart of Midtown Manhattan, I definitely would tell you to recommend the New York City one. The Long Island one sits on a 156 acre campus, so it definitely gives you that campus vibe with all of our buildings spread out. So it's definitely up to you on that piece. Just, I call this our fun fact sheet. This is a lot of our good information that we have about the school. We are super hands-on institution. So if you're looking for a school that has like multiple student body, we're a small school. So we have about 47 or 4,000 roughly students on both campuses. We have 11 to student faculty ratio. So that's something that we're very proud about. And like it's in our name, New York Tech, we are a STEM based institution. So what that means is that we are all about hands-on experiences and hands-on approaches for all of our students. And just some fun facts on the sheet as well is that we have a really great career service department. So a lot of our programs that I'll talk about further on does have internships encompassed in that piece. So just relating to that, we have six different schools as well as 90 different programs. So we are a STEM-based institution, like I've stated. So if you're looking for liberal arts, we really don't have much liberal art courses. We have everything from graphic design, medicine. We have an entire nursing program as well. We just recently added exercise science to our course load, as well as we added combined medical programs, as well as combined MBA and engineering programs. So just like college, you definitely want to accelerate that success. So we have these combined pieces. Just be mindful that we have been test optional this year. The programs that are not test optional are a combined program. So as you see on the left hand of the screen, we have everything from OT all the way to DO. So we are a fully functioning medical school as well. So all these programs do require an SAT or an ACT as well as supplemental essay to accompany that. Other programs that we offer at the institution, of course, has our accounting with an MBA. We have graphic design with the concentration as well that we just added this year as a combined piece with our MBA program as well, as well as interior design. If any engineering students are out there, we definitely have that four plus one. So what this point does for you is definitely accelerates your success as well as saves you money as well as time, which I think that we're very good at at NYT. Unfortunately, a very common question that a lot of students ask us, can you double major at the school? Unfortunately, because of our course load and coursework, it's hard to double major. However, you could double minor and your minors do not have to be related to your program. So if you are a medical student, you could definitely take a minor in graphic design. For any of our graphic design students, you're allowed to add a minor to humanities. Something I like to throw out there, our most popular majors are wine, beer, and spirit tasting. So that's something that a lot of our students take a minor in. Of course, you have to be 21 and older to participate in that course. So along with all that fun and games and stuff, as I like to say, school is fun. You definitely wanna have something more to add to your belt, which is getting involved. Getting involved is a great way to network, great way to make friends, as well as your goal after college is definitely to have a job. So we have all types of clubs available on both campuses, New York City, as well as Long Island. A lot of our um, clubs are cohort. So there's sometimes that the club will just meet on one campus. However, we have virtual rooms and virtual um, Zooms that you definitely could join on board. If you're looking for sorority in Greek life, we have that. We are a big esports school as well. So that's something that we, a lot of our students get involved in. Even that are not gamers, they end up getting involved in it. We have intramural sports as well. Unfortunately, currently this year, we do not have any contact sport, but we will be bringing that back hopefully in the next year or so. So definitely something to get involved in and definitely a good source to add to your resume.
When it comes to my most important slide is tuition and aid. Since we are a private institution, we do offer merit-based scholarship. So this is something that you do not have to apply to. It's automatically given when you apply to the school, which is through the Common App or via nyt.edu itself. Our merit-based scholarships are strictly based on your GPA. So we definitely encourage students to have at least an 80 or higher. Of course, the higher the GPA, the better it is because you are eligible for more scholarships as well as additional aid that we have at the institution. This is just something to look at. Our tuition currently roughly is 38,000. It is gonna be locked until 2022. And if you get a thousand, $30,000 scholarship, that's a big chunk of your tuition. So definitely something to look into. And we have additional scholarships that you could apply for as well. So on that note, thank you. Um, definitely feel free to reach out to us. We are working remote and you could email us, call us, text us, and I can leave my contact information in the chat feature. Thank you. Thank you so much, New York Institute of Technology. Next up, um, I would like to introduce to you Norwich University. But before she, um, before they present, I wanna make sure that I reiterate the importance of putting those questions um, in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and our presenters will have the opportunity to answer. So list your question and then the institution that you um, hope will answer your question. So next up, Norwich University. All right, let me just pull my um, presentation up for you guys. But hello, I'm Miranda. Um, I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Norwich. All right, so um, I'm just gonna keep this short and sweet for you guys. Um, Norwich University is America's oldest private military college. We were founded in 1819 by Captain Alden Partridge. As you can see, we are located in the beautiful hills of Vermont. Um, it's a really beautiful place to go to college. Our campus consists of 2,300 undergraduate students and 1,500 graduate students, which are online, so you won't see them on campus. And we do have students from over 45 states and 20 countries. Uh, we also love to highlight our international studies program and our global classroom. Not only do students from all over the world come to Norwich, but our students have opportunities to studies in places to study in places like China, France, Germany, even the Virgin Islands. So if you're a big traveler, definitely check out our international studies programs. We also pride ourselves on being one of the first institutions to accept international students. Your opportunities are endless at Norwich. We have 30 plus academic programs, 80 plus clubs, activities, and organizations, 20 varsity sports, leadership training, the Corps of Cadets, and ROTC um, for every branch. Uh, we're also the home uh, of the first collegiate marching band, which is pretty awesome. We like to pride ourselves on being a school of many, many firsts. We are one campus, but we are two lifestyles. Students can um, get the traditional civilian college experience, or they can participate in our 24 seven leadership lab, the Corps of Cadets. All students have the uh, equal opportunity to participate in extracurriculars, sports, um, anything like that, regardless of their lifestyle choice. And we all live by the Norwich guiding values of I will not lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate those who do. Um, and we are very serious about that honor code. Students will actually enforce it um, with each other rather than um, the staff enforcing it among students. So our application process, we are rolling admission, so feel free to submit an application. It is free through our website and the Common App. Um, your assigned admissions counselor, me, uh, will reach out to you as you get started and I will guide you through the process. Note, uh, we are test optional. We love to see short essays um, and strong letters of recommendation. Um, it takes about 10 days average business time to receive your response from us, but we're typically pretty quick about it, uh, especially lately. We've, we've been getting back to students within just a couple of days with their decision. Um, and any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Norwich University. Wow, guys, aren't you having fun? This is such a great way to learn about so many schools in a short amount of time. Next up, you have the opportunity to hear from Paul Smith's college. All right, good evening, everyone. Let me just pull the presentation up real quick. Alrighty, so hello everyone. My name is Corey. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions at Paul Smith's College. Um, this is our campus right here. So we're located in upstate New York um, in the Adirondack Mountains. So for those who are familiar with the Adirondacks or are not, um, we are, the Adirondack Mountains is the largest state park in the uh, country and we are the only four year college right in the park. So our campus itself consists of 14,000 acres and you can see here just a glimpse of it. All right, like I said, we are located up in Paul Smith's, New York. If you're familiar with um, Lake Placid, it's the home of the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympics. Lake Placid is just about 30 minutes from our campus and a lot of our students are really, really involved um, with the Olympic town, um, whether it's internships, externships, um, campus jobs, et cetera. And we are only 15 minutes away from Saranac Lake. These are our five different departments. So we really pride ourselves in our hands-on experiential education. So if you're the type of learner that really likes to learn, you know, in the field of study, uh, learning from alums, um, current employers, rather than sitting at a desk listening to a lecture, that is how our, our campus is. So a lot of our um, programs kind of correlate with that. So we have definitely a specific niche of programs um, that you might not find at every single institution. Um, but if you're interested in any of these, five departments, I definitely suggest checking out Paul Smiths. You can see the uh, programs within the departments, uh, but we have both associate degrees and bachelor degrees, as well as we just expanded to our first couple master's programs as well. So um, as you can see, business and hospitality and culinary management is definitely focused on um, our tourist side of the area, right? Um, Paul Smiths actually used to be the first Adirondack resort and it housed uh, people like the Roosevelt's, the Rockefeller's, all those big names back then, they stayed actually right on campus. Um, and we still continue to carry on that very tourist hospitable traditions. If you can imagine with our geographic location, forestry and the natural sciences are huge, especially in our area. Again, you explore our 14,000 acres and then some, we um, have a lot of really great uh, collaboration efforts with uh, not only the park, but upstate New York as a whole. Um, and same for environment and society too. Um, parks and conservation management, environmental studies, integrative studies uh, are really great uh, programs to join um, in a place like Paul Smith's. Now, obviously too, your studies are very, very important, but you also wanna get involved on campus. It makes for, um, to make friends, build leadership skills and networking as well. These are just a handful of our clubs and activities that we offer. Again, very, very specific to our area and the special interests that our students have. Um, a few of them that um, might catch your eye on here is we have a draft horse club. So we actually have a draft horse barn right on campus with two draft horses, um, as well as um, a sugar bush. So we actually make our own maple syrup right on campus. And it's actually a class that you can take. It's called Maple Productions. Um, so those are a couple of the different clubs and activities that you can join and be a part of. With, along with clubs and activities, we have um, our athletics department. Uh, so we are a Yankee small college um, for athletics. So we don't offer athletic scholarships, um, but certainly very competitive. We usually compete with a lot of the other uh, smaller private schools um, in the Northeast, but they do venture out um, outside of the Northeast as well. One of our recent ones that we just added is our esports team. And we actually just um, got a really big donation for a huge esports lab right on our campus as well, which students are really enjoying. And a little bit about the application process. So I would be your uh, primary admissions counselor. And if you are interested in applying to Paul Smith's, um, it is free to apply. We are rolling admissions, which means we don't have an application deadline and we have students applying all throughout the year and we are test optional. So uh, we don't require SATs or ACTs. You can find our web or you can find our application right on our website, as well as the Common App, we're there as well. Um, and we do offer merit-based scholarships too. So we offer merit-based scholarships of up to $19,000 um, and we'll help you through uh, the scholarship process, financial aid process, um, and all of that to make sure that um, you get the most out of your Paul Smith's College experience. 
a few uh, virtual events coming up. We do have our open house coming up on March 27th. If you're interested, um, you can just contact me and I can give you that information. Again, it's all going to be virtual right now. Hopefully we'll be back on campus soon with uh, these large events. Um, we have a few other uh, special virtual events coming up too. We are doing uh, in-person campus tours if you are interested. So again, feel free to reach out. And finally, we just added our social media handles. Uh, we're really active on our social media platform. So if you're looking to see some current Paul Smith's College student takeovers, additional information, um, and reaching out to different departments, that's a really great way to contact them. And I will add my personal contact information in the chat as well, but hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you so much to you, Corey and Paul Smith's College. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you Penn State University. You might be on mute. I was going to say, and I'm the person who can't unmute myself. <laughs> nice to nice to see you all. My name is Stacy Kowalczyk. Um, I am an assistant director of admission at Penn State University. So I'm really happy to, to be here with you all today uh, to talk about Penn State University. So um, Penn State University, obviously, we are a large major research institution, right? We're sort of a supersized school. You might know about small, medium, large size schools. We're a supersized school with a total enrollment of about 95,000 students, and we are a multi multi-campus system. We are the State University of Pennsylvania with over 20 campuses and locations all, all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So what I'd like to do now is just show you a few stats to, to give you a little bit more information about Penn State in that we are a world-class university as one of the premier higher education institutions in the world. We want you to get the best education available to you. We are ranked as a top 1% university in the world by the Center for World University Rankings. So they ranked 18,000 universities across the globe and they ranked us number 53. Um, so that puts us in that top 1%. And when you're looking at numbers, we do think as you're looking across uh, all schools, you should be looking at graduation rate and retention rate because really that's what's going to show you if universities that you're looking at, if they're supporting the students, they're admitting them and then they're you know going on successfully and, and ultimately graduating. We are really proud to say that we have 20%, 25% higher than the national graduation rate average and 12% higher in terms of retention rate. We really think that has to do with admitting the right students and then supporting them academically as they move through their education into what comes next. And for some students, it's full time work and we have an awesome highly ranked career services center to help you with those interviews and resume writing. Or maybe it's applying to medical school, law school, graduate school, whatever it is, we're going to help prepare you. And while we are a large university, we are able to maintain a 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So you are able to get that time with the professors in the classroom. And we are a research one university and you can't get any better than that with over a billion dollars in annual research funding from government agencies, businesses, nonprofits. We have research opportunities across all academic disciplines for you to get involved in as an undergraduate. We also rank number five in the country, both in terms of study abroad programs and number of students who study abroad. I know it's a little weird to talk about in a COVID time, but we're really hoping that that comes back next year so you can take advantage of that in your education because we think it's a really important part of your undergraduate education. We're going to support that at Penn State. And then we do want to talk to you about academics, obviously. Penn State has over 275 majors and 185 minors for you to choose from. Those academic um, disciplines are, are, home, are housed within academic units, which we call colleges. And we know that nationwide, over 75% of our students are going to be changing their major at least once. So we have what we call a division of undergraduate studies for students that are undecided, where you'll be working closely with academic advisors advisors to take classes, see what you're interested in, see what you're good at, see what you're not good at. So you're able to declare your major after four semesters in that exploratory classwork. So that's an option for you as well. And we do offer a few programs as you go through the admissions process I'll talk about in a second that are what we call direct admit programs. So the only time you can apply to them is, is right now in your senior year of high school as you're moving into your freshman year of college. And those are programs typically, um, you know, nursing is one of those programs, but the other programs are typically um, within the College of Arts and Architecture and they might have a performance-based piece of the admissions process. 
And at Penn State, we have things for everyone to do. There are 1,200 clubs and organizations for you to get involved in, social, religious, cultural organizations, service, some things that are purely fun, purely academic, networking organizations. In terms of sports, of course, we have intramural sports and, and club sports for everyone to take advantage of. We also have 29 Division I varsity athletic sports that compete in the Big Ten Conference. We also do have campuses that have Division Three athletics, if that's of interest to you. So there's lots of ways for you to get involved um, at Penn State. And we think there's no reason for you to be in your dorm room and, and not being involved. So we really want you to get involved. And we think one of the best ways to get involved is through those different clubs and organizations, get out of your comfort zone, and you have that opportunity to take on leadership roles in those organizations, which are really going to add to your resume. Now, the way Penn State works is that we are one university geographically spread out all over the state of Pennsylvania. We have campuses that range in size from just 500 students up to 5,000 students, and then the University Park campus, which is our largest campus with 46,000 students. Each of these campuses have their own culture, location, Penn State experience, but they're all Penn State. No matter what campus you start at, no matter what campus you finish at, you're going to have one transcript, you're going to get one degree, and it's going to say the Pennsylvania State University. What I have here to show you quickly is just a map of the state of Pennsylvania. Everywhere on this map that there is a blue dot, there is a Penn State campus. You'll notice some of these little blue dots have orange uh, little monopoly houses. Some have red monopoly houses. That has to uh, do with indicating where there's housing for you. Usually out of state students are typically looking at these campuses that have these little orange or red monopoly houses, meaning their dorms. Um, and, and perhaps in-state students as well. Those campuses that are just blue dots mean the students might live off campus in an apartment or commute from home. But we just want to show you that and tell you there are lots of options to complete your Penn State degree, whether it's all four years at one campus or you take advantage of the two plus two program. I know my time here is wrapping up. Um, I see uh, Courtney has turned on her camera. So let me just say in terms of applying to Penn State, you're able to apply to us through the Common App, the Coalition App, or the My Penn State App, which is our own app. It, the important thing I think for you guys to know this year and, and as a result of COVID and we want to be um, as flexible as we can to, to you all is that we have moved test optional. So you are certainly able to send us your test scores if you would like to, but if you weren't able to take a test or um, you don't feel that they're reflective of your academic abilities, um, you certainly don't need to send us your test scores. Um, and I will be on the chat to answer any other questions you guys have. Thanks so much. AC, thanks so much to you and Penn State University. Our final presentation tonight will be from Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Hello, everybody. I am Bonnie Kern. I am the Transfer and Outreach Coordinator, and I'm presenting to you Pennsylvania College of Art and Design today. This is the place to come if you would like to be an artist, create, work in the industry, such as a fine artist or create work for Disney, Netflix, um, or work in our new LED program. So let's kick it off with, we are located in Lancaster, PA. We're about an hour and a half from Philly and or Baltimore in the Washington DC area. Um, we are in a small town, but you get a little bit of a city vibe. Um, we are downtown surrounded by art galleries, coffee shops, um, just everything creative. We are um, located on Gallery Row. Um, so everywhere you walk, you look around, you see artists and just a creative environment. We are a micro college. So other than my fellow, I'm a Penn State alumni myself, my fellow Penn Staters with a big college, this is a very small atmosphere. Um, we are 300 students and under. You have a classroom with 10 to one. Um, fun fact about our building, we are located in an old redesigned parking garage. So the benefit of this small environment, but yet this big building, uh, we have during COVID been continually on campus um, because we have such enormous classrooms and just a small amount of students per class. You definitely have that individual experience, which is great. Um, definitely a one-on-one. -on -one. We offer only Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees. So again, this is the college to come where you create. Um, 
So it is for artists and taught by artists. All of our professors are professional artists themselves. Um, they will walk you through all of their degree choices. We have minors as well as um, degrees in fine art, graphic design, animation and game art and illustration, photography and video and live experience design. Um, fine art is where you get to learn how to be, you know, a painter, illustrator, uh, sculptor. Um, you can get into fabric design, um, metal, industrial design, fine art. You can almost tailor this degree to your interest. Graphic design, you're going to be involved in creating logos, packaging, um, anything from advertising for movies even. So it's very endless how many avenues you can get into graphic design. You can start your own firm or work for um, design firms. Animation and game art. This is where you're gonna learn how to create games such as um, coming up with the designs for Fortnite, storyline, storyboarding. Um, animation is involved in advertising in movies. Um, illustration will take you into designing and this is an intense drawing major. So if you love to draw, this is the degree for you. Um, photography and video. Myself, I'm a pre professional photographer. So I've started my own business in a photography, but you can also do the same. You can um, further your degree and get art education or go get your master's and teach as I do uh, photography in college. Um, many design firms also need photographers. So it's not just having your own studio doing weddings and portraiture. Um, you can really get into corporate and contemporary and industrial photography. Um, so that is another avenue that is not just studio based. Um, our new degree we've launched, Live Experience Design. If anybody has heard of Rock Lidditz, which is nearby in Lancaster, um, this is the degree where you learn how to put on the spectacular shows, for example, within the Super Bowl, um, any rock shows, um, Taylor Swift, the big set designs, they come, her, she and her crew come and set up and practice how they're going to build the sets for these um, rock shows. Um, all, live experience design also brings you into, say, example, anthropology, where you're walking through the mall and you see the amazing um, outside story, um, the design spaces where they're advertising their clothes and they have flowers and all of these things are interacting within shops. Nike has live experience designers that are working for them. So this is a very creative degree. There's many avenues that you can encounter. Um, Many big industries, Google has live experience designers um, all throughout their company. Um, our portfolio, in our application process, our biggest thing that we consider for application and acceptance is not SAT scores. We don't require them. Our requirement is portfolio and a personal statement. We want to know who you are as artist, why you're here, what inspired you to create and to come to pursue your Bachelor of Fine Arts. Um, we require a portfolio where you have to submit eight to 10 pieces of your work. And we try, I review most of the portfolio, so I always try to encourage a variety of work. If you're coming into animation and game art, but you also have created fine art pieces, sculpture, ceramics, take pictures of those and include those in your portfolio. It gives us an idea of the versatility that you possess as an artist. Um, so that's our big application requirement. Um, again, we don't require SATs. We do, if I have any transfer students out there, we accept up to 90 credits that just upped from 60 credits this year. So we accept a lot of transfer credits and try and get you out um, with a Pennsylvania College of Art and Design degree BFA. Um, please, if you guys have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat. One other thing I wanna note is we require internships which is fantastic, especially in the art world. Every summer before your senior year, you're required to have a junior internship. Um, we've placed people in Disney and Google and all over the place within um, the artistic world. Get your foot in the door and get you a, a possibility of a job exiting PCAD, as we call it. Um, again, thank you for listening to this artistic presentation of our art college and we welcome applicants. Any questions, please put them in the chat.
Ani, thanks so much to you and Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. I'd now like to invite all of our presenters to turn back on their cameras and um, we'll go round robin in the same order that you presented. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And so we'll start with Newman University. So I would say my, uh, the, my favorite uh, tradition is gonna be homecoming. Uh, so alumni is on campus, uh, your family's on campus, your peers, your friends, all, all the sports teams are playing bonfire, fireworks, activities. It's just a whole weekend of um, nonstop events and uh, probably been my favorite. Great, thank you. Um, there you go. Yes, thanks. Um, one thing about New York Tech I think that I love is we do May Fest, which usually happens around the 5th of May, and we do a whole carnival thing on campus. So it's like a de-stressor for all of our students to just hang out on campus, both in New York City as well as in Long Island. And for our New York City campus, we use Central Park since it's right across the street of us. So we do Ferris wheels. Sometimes we get an ice rink. We have like candy. It's like a whole carnival. And I think it's a great way just to end the accomplishments of our students every year. One tradition on our campus that is by all means my favorite is something we call rail jam. Every winter um, we have a ski and snowboard competition because our school is literally on a mountain and we own a mountain. Um, and there's food trucks, there's music, performers, students get to enter in the competition, watch competition, um, and it goes on all night and it's everybody's favorite thing to do um, to get us through the winter here. <laughs> Um, I think my favorite tradition and event at Paul Smith's is our homesteading festival. So this is actually on the same weekend as homecoming, um, but it's a day where it's during the fall and it's basically this huge fall festival. So we have zip lines through campus. We do horse drawn carriage tours through the trails. We do a sugar bush breakfast. Um, and we also have um, being close to a mountain as well. We have our ski lifts that are happening with, um, with our students running it. So it's one big giant fall festival. I think it really encompasses the Adirondacks. Well, I'm really proud at Penn State University to say we are home to Division uh, One Big Ten athletics, and um, there is really nothing like being at a Penn State football game um, in the stadium with 110 of your 110,000 of your closest friends all cheering on the the Nittany Lions to victory. It's especially special if you get to go to a whiteout game, which is in the evening, where everyone in the stadium is also wearing their white clothes cheering on Penn State. Um, that usually happens when we're playing one of our big opponents like Ohio State. Um, so, so making sure that that you get to a Penn State football game and get to take part in that is is nothing like I've ever seen anywhere <laughs> before. Hi, we just got finished um, our annual design-a-thon, which is typically a 24-hour design marathon, but this time it was 12 hours and we have eight local companies that ask the graphic design students and illustration students to this is our product, go. You have 12 hours, 24 hours to design our entire new logo persona and we're gonna use it, run with it, market it and give the PCAD students credit for it. So that was exciting, it just finished the other day. So that's our fun. Very cool. Well, I'm gonna ask you guys one more question. Um, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Mostly um, our audience tonight is um, rising seniors, so they're juniors in high school. We might have some um, sophomores and freshmen, but what advice, ex you're the experts, what advice would you give them? And we'll go in the same order. So my advice would be, you know, ask all the questions um, because especially in, in the world we're living in today, um, there's a lot of uncertainty still. So ask every, all on any and all questions you have. Um, you know, we aren't robots, we're real people and we are all willing to help answer any questions. Whatever's gonna make the process as smooth and seamless for you, just don't be afraid to ask those questions and reach out. I very much agree with that as well. But I also say enjoy the process. It may be daunting, but it's like shopping. I consider this window shopping, especially at this point in time. 
where you want to look at all the colleges and then start looking at the discounts they offer, such as the financial aid packages and the scholarships, because never not not every college follows their sticker price. So definitely enjoy the process and just good luck. I think it's really important to connect with your admissions counselor early on. They can help you. We are here to help. We do it all day, every day. Um, and we have a lot of information that you might not necessarily see, um, you know, all the time. I also think it's really important to visit campus as well. You know, you need to actually feel the product and uh, see the product and really experience it more than just seeing it online. So if you get a chance, definitely go to all the colleges you can and, and, and visit them in person. Yeah, I agree with what everyone said. Um, I was definitely going to piggyback on visiting as many campuses as you can to get the real feel, um, but also talking to different people in different parts of the college process, right? So your admissions counselors are here, but also see if you can connect with any professors in your field and also current students too um, in that field too, because they're the ones that um, weren't that long ago in your shoes um, and will be able to give you some really great insight. And so I will say while visiting is super important, um, there may be a lot of challenges to visiting right now, right? So some of our campuses may not be open for visitors. It may be difficult for you to travel due to COVID restrictions, what, whatever it may be. So I think it's really important right now to take advantage of the virtual offerings that so many of us are, are offering and have spun up that are so vast. Um, there, we are offering things that we just never would have offered before. And it's just, it's more that you as a student, as you're learning can take advantage of. Um, things like panels with students, um, tours of campus that are virtual. We are having academic information sessions where academic units are hosting open houses. We're actually having research sessions. We're having housing sessions. And those are just units of the university that if you were just simply going to an admissions tour, you would not be interacting with. So I think there are some real opportunities now in a virtual world to take advantage of, of learning more about a university and really seeing if it's a good fit for you. So I would just encourage you to take advantage of all those opportunities that exist virtually right now. Um, my advice would be, I always tell my students and my kids, find a way to make a living doing what you love. You know, really as applicants, seniors and transfer students really search for what you want to do, what you want to spend your time on for the next four years, um, learning and what do you want to do when you graduate? Where do you want to be? Um, my other advice is to, um, we have a portfolio merit scholarship within the application process. You submit your work. And I've told a lot of my students, um, we've only had you know a handful of students that applied and submitted work. Often people think, well, there'll be too many people. I won't win. Um, always take a risk, you know, submit your work because you never know, you know, you could win a scholarship. You could, you know, get that money and make that possibility for your degree come true. So my, my advice is to always, always put your, put your foot in the door. Never know where it'll take you. See, they have so much great advice. Um, I will also just say, have a little fun. This was, I think, mentioned, like keep, keep an open mind, um, you might end up at a college or university that you've never even heard of before because there are so many great options out there. Um, as you close out tonight, there will be a quick four question survey. So make sure you provide us with some feedback. There are more sessions. There's still one more hour more. So if you enjoyed this format, there are more sessions. And the recording of tonight's session, um, the one that you viewed here, but also all the other ones that are happening this evening will be available within a week at strivescan.com slash new Jersey. And with that, I will say have a good one. Enjoy your college search and have some fun. Bye-bye guys.